Hey everybody, welcome to the Jada and Stitches show. In a lot of the places where we live, plastic single-use bags are becoming less and less available and less encouraged. So that means that our personal collections of reusable shopping bags are growing, and it's really fun to be able to make some to add to that collection. But what do you do when you go to the food store and you want to get your oranges and your lemons and your limes and your apples? Well, instead of using those little tiny single-use plastic bags for individual groups of fruits and vegetables, we thought today we would make some of our own out of some simple cotton and using a really simple mesh stitch. This little shopping bag may look small, but it's really not. The mesh stitch can really expand, allowing you to put a lot of fruits and vegetables into this bag. And the top closes up a little bit to make sure that nothing wants to come spilling out the top when you've put it into your shopping cart. See? <laughs> There's a lot of room in there. That's three oranges, two big grapefruits, and a couple of apples, and still room for lots more. It's also really sturdy. Cotton makes a strong bag, so you don't have to worry about anything snapping and falling out. And once you've got it full up, you can take one handle and pull it through the other one, and it kind of locks the top in place. So when you plunk it back down into your shopping cart, nothing's gonna come rolling out the top. So let's grab our hooks, grab our cotton yarn, Grab a snack, we'll head on over to the craft table, and we will stitch up a fruit and vegetable mesh shopping bag together. In order to make our fruit and vegetable mesh shopping bags, we're going to use 50 grams or 68 yards of a 100% cotton medium worsted size for yarn. So I have a lot more yarn here than I need. You only need around 50 grams or 68 yards. You're gonna want a pair of scissors, a yarn needle. Today's hook is a 5.5 millimeter, also known as an I or a nine in the US, a size five in the UK. You may also want a safety pin or a stitch marker to help keep track of your rows as we progress. And if you're not already subscribed to our show, click that button and the bell so you never miss another episode. And once we've got all of our supplies together, we can get started. We're going to begin with a slip knot. We're going to start at the bottom of the bag, and to do that, we're going to chain 17 to begin. Once you have 17 chains, make sure you give them a count to ensure you have 17. We're going to skip the first chain from the hook, find the next chain, and work three half double crochets into it. So we're starting at the edge or the side of the bottom of the bag. So three half double crochets into the second chain from the hook. And now you're going to half double crochet into each of the next 14 chains. So you're gonna half double crochet once into each of the next 14 chains. That'll bring you up to the last chain and I'll catch up with you there. Once you've half double crocheted into those 14 chains, that'll bring you up to the last chain of our foundation chain row. And we're going to work three half double crochets into that last chain. So three half double crochets into the last chain, three half double crochets into the first chain, 14 half double crochets in between. And now we're going to turn our foundation chain row so that we're looking at the underside of it. So all those stitches we just did, we're looking at the bottom. We're going to half double crochet in each of those 14 underside chains all the way back to the beginning. So this is what it looks like. If you pull back a little bit, you see that that's where those three half double crochets just landed in your last chain. This is the next place you're going to work a half double crochet. So skip over top of that big space that the other three are in. That's the first of 14. You should have 14 undersides. So pull up, you want the actual, you don't want the top of the chain, you want to sort of grab underneath both of those. So you're literally touching the bottom of the stitch from the other side of your foundation chain row. There'll be 14 of them. Just work a half double crochet into the bottom of each of those stitches all the way across and I'll catch up with you. Please visit our show
shop and purchase a pattern. It helps support our show and we'll put a link to our shop in the description box down below. 14 half double crochet later that brings you back to the beginning. So there's the first three half double crochet that we worked into the second chain from the hook. You're going to join with a slip stitch to the top of the first half double crochet you made and you should have 34 stitches all the way around. 34 stitches and that's the very bottom of our little sack. Row two, we're going to chain one. We are going to half double crochet twice into the same stitch that we joined in. So if you pull up a little bit, you see that space there? That's where you're going to work your first two half double crochets. So two half double crochets into that same place that you just joined in. Work two half double crochets into each of the next two stitches. So we're rounding the corner here. And just like row one, you're going to work a half double crochet into each of the next 14 stitches. Fourteen half double crochets later, you've arrived at the little turn on the other side. So you should have three stitches there from the last row, all worked into that same end chain. You're going to work two half double crochet into each of those three stitches that round the corner. And as you work those two half double crochets into each of those stitches, you'll probably find that you feel like you're a little bit back or you're sitting a little bit back still on the curve. You see, you might feel like you need to come around the curve. Don't worry about it. Even row three will, will, will feel the same way. That's not <laughs> something you need to worry about. You should still have, most importantly, 14 stitches between here and the end of row two. And like row one, you're just going to work a half double crochet into each one of them. 14 stitches later, you're back to the beginning and you're looking at the false stitch. So don't confuse this little piece here that your chain one comes up and out of as an actual stitch. If you count, you should have 14 half double crochets between the end of your curve and the end of that row. So we're just going to ignore this little stitch. We're going to instead join with a slip stitch to the top of the first half double crochet that we made in row two. And you'll have 40 stitches if you count them up. So 40 stitches all the way around for the end of row two. Row three, we're going to chain one into the same stitch that we joined in. And if you pull up, you should see that little space below it. You're going to work two half double crochet into the same stitch as joining. And we're working a curve. We're going to work a half double crochet into the next stitch and then we're going to work two, one, two, one across the next four stitches. So two half double crochet into the first stitch, half double crochet into the next and one more time. Two half double crochet into the next stitch and one half double crochet into the stitch after that. You should have nine stitches so far in your curve and that includes the two that you started with. So two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So nine stitches in your curve. Like the previous two rows, you're going to work a half double crochet into each of the next 14 stitches and that'll bring us up to the second curve. 14 half double crochets later and we are going to do the same little expansion all the way around the second curve and remember you're going to end a little bit further back than you feel you should be but that's okay that's not going to upset the shape of your bag in fact it's important to keep your counts up um, going properly even if you wind up a little bit back because we make up for it later so we're going to work the same little thing we did around uh, on row or around the first bend we're going to work two half double crochet into the next stitch, a half double crochet into the stitch after that, and then two, one, two, one. And your ninth stitch is going to end about here. 
So two half double crochet into the first stitch of the turn, a half double crochet into the stitch after that, and repeat twice more. Your ninth stitch in the turn will leave you just a bit back from finishing all the way around, but like I said, that's not important. What is important is that you have 14 stitches left in your row, and you're going to work a half double crochet into each of them. Don't be confused by the false stitch. We're going to skip that when we get back to the end. 14 stitches later, and you should be back at the beginning. There's your false stitch. You're not going to do anything to it. You're just going to step over top of it and join with a slip stitch to the first half double crochet that you made. That's the bottom, the solid bottom of our bag now finished. And you should have 46 stitches at the end of row three. For the beginning of row four, you may want to get your safety pin or stitch marker handy. Row four, and now every row from row four up to row 23 is going to begin and operate the same way. We're going to chain one to begin, and we're going to single crochet into the same stitch that we joined in. So we're changing up the pattern now. Single crochet into the same stitch the joined in, and here is what you're, you may wish to mark your, put your stitch marker on, I should say. Make the first single crochet in your row and put a stitch marker on it just so you can see it when you get round back to the beginning. This row four, it will be fairly obvious because it's going to stand out from the rest of our bag, but rows going forward, it might be a little more difficult to see. So if you have trouble keeping track of your rows, you may want to mark the first stitch of each row going forward with a safety pin or a stitch marker. We're going to chain three. We're going to skip a stitch, find the next one, and single crochet into it. Chain three, and you're going to get super fast at this. Skip a stitch, single crochet into the next one. So we're not increasing, we're not decreasing, we're just creating now a nice simple mesh stitch. Chain three, skip a stitch, find the next one, single crochet. You're going to repeat this little chain three, skip a stitch, single crochet into the next stitch, all the way around, and I'll catch up with you back at the beginning. As you get back round to the beginning of the row, there's your marked stitch. That's the single crochet you began the row with. You can chain your last three chains. So this is your last little chain three mesh space you're making. Remove that safety pin or stitch marker, and then join with a slip stitch to the top of the single crochet. So that's marked stitch, you're just going to slip stitch in it to join the row. You should have 23 chain three spaces all the way around, and this should look a little bit like a, a fancy little miniature placemat <laughs> right now. Every row will begin and end as you with a slip stitch into that. So you're going to start with a single crochet, get all the way around, and join with a slip stitch to the top of that single crochet. And before you finish the row, slip stitch into the chain three space. So you're going to find that you end up moving all the way around, but that's okay because when we get to the top of this bag, we're going to make up for all of this moving. So what you should have right now is something that looks like this. Every row begins with a chain one and a single crochet into that space. You're not bothering to grab a chain or a stitch. You're working into the space. If, like I said, you have trouble kind of keeping track of where the beginning and ends of your rows are, because at this point it starts to all look the same, you might want to mark that first stitch with the stitch marker or a single crochet so you know where it is when you get back round to it and you don't accidentally keep going in the round because we want to join our rows here. And then it's just the same thing from here on out. You chain three, find the next chain three space, single crochet right into the middle of it. Chain three, find the next chain three space, single crochet right into the middle of it. Chain three, find the next chain three space, single crochet right into the middle of it. Repeat that all the way around and I'll catch up with you. At the end of row five, 
You'll know you're at the end because you've marked your first single crochet with a stitch marker or a, a safety pin like I have here. Work your last three chains, remove your stitch marker, and slip stitch to join in that single crochet you began the row with. So every row from here out until the end of row 23 will be the same. And you're just going to move a little bit all the way around with every single row. If you lay it flat, it'll probably be laying out flat. And like I say, it'll look like an adorable little miniature placemat at this point. Uh, but as you continue to work every single row, you'll always ever have th 23 chain three spaces. So that isn't going to change. And eventually the bag will start to turn into a bag. It'll start to turn up and, and become more of a bag. And as you can see, the bottom of the bag is a little bit pinched and then it starts to get a little bit wider and then we're going to close it in again when we get to the top. So I'm going to turn you loose. Rows 6 through 23 are going to be exactly the same. As you finish every single row, make sure you slip stitch into the chain 3 space next to where you fastened off. Chain 1, single crochet into the same space and add your stitch marker if you feel that helps. Uh, keep track of your rows, so just slip it in there after you've worked that single crochet. Once you have your stitch marker in place, chain three, and just begin the pattern. Find the next chain three space, single crochet into it, chain three. Find the next chain three space, and single crochet into it. When you get all the way back round to the beginning, chain your last three, remove your stitch marker, Join with a slip stitch to the top of that single crochet, slip stitch into the single, the chain three space right next to it, chain one, single crochet to begin, replace your stitch marker, and continue. And the way to count your rows is to remember that they're going to be a little offset. So this would be row four, and that was the first row of mesh. The next row, the little loops sit next to it. So that would be row five. And then row six, row seven, row eight, row nine. And I'll show you when we get to the end of row 23, how to count them up. So off you go. You can work a whole bunch of rows of mesh stitch now. Don't forget to move your stitch marker at the end and beginning of each row. And I'll catch up with you. At the end of row 23, you should have something that looks like this. Remember, you can count your rows. This would be row four, this first little loop from the mesh stitch. Row four, row five, row six, row seven, row eight, row nine. And you count back and forth on little diagonals all the way up until you get to the top. And your last row will be row 23. We are going to start to close in the top of our little mesh bag now and then eventually create a handle. So when I've finished my row, if I lay my little bag down flat and I flatten it out so that my edges, you've probably found that you've gone all the way around a couple times. So I've pretty much joined in the very middle of the top of my bag. So my last row, row 23, joined and finished pretty much in the middle of what would be either the front of the back. So that should be roughly where you are, but it doesn't matter a whole lot <laughs> for row 24. Uh, we're going to just start to close it in now. So right where you've joined with a slip stitch to the top of that first single crochet of the row, you're going to chain one. So we're not slip stitching into the next chain three space. We're just going to chain one and we're going to half double crochet in place. So we're going to half double crochet into the same place that we just joined. So half double crochet there. We're going to half double crochet once into the next chain three space. We're going to half double crochet into the top of that single crochet. Half double crochet into the chain three space. Half double crochet into the single crochet from the row previous. And that's all you're going to do all the way around. You're going to work a half double crochet into the middle of a chain three space and a half double crochet into the actual single crochet that is separates all the little chain three mesh spaces. So you're going to have, you're going to go from having 23 chain three spaces all the way around to having roughly 46 stitches. So one half double crochet in the top of every single single crochet and a half double crochet in the, in, so in the center of every chain three space. So we're closing in the top of our bag. And that's all you have to do for row 24. 
worked a half double crochet into every chain three space and every stitch all the way around, you work your half last half double crochet, which will be number 46, into the last chain three space, and then you're going to join with a slip stitch to the top of that first half double crochet that you made. So you should have 46 half double crochets at the end of row 24. And for row 25, we're just going to continue doing we, what we did with row 24. So we're going to chain one to begin. We're going to half double crochet into the same stitch that we joined in. So if you pull up on it, you should see the space right there. That's where you half double crochet. Just half double crochet in the top of each stitch around. And when you get back to the beginning, there will be a false stitch. You're going to skip it because we want to maintain a stitch count of 46. So half double crochet in each stitch all the way around, and I'll catch back up with you. Stitch number 46 will be right here, leaving you with the false stitch when you get back to the beginning. You're going to ignore it, jump over top, and join with a slip stitch to the top of that first half double crochet you made. That is the end of row 25. And you should find that if you flatten down your bag, you are roughly in the middle of your, uh, the middle of the front or the back of your little sack here. And that's perfectly all right. We are going to start to form the handles now. So we're going to loosely slip stitch across the next five stitches. Once you've slip stitched loosely across those five stitches, you should find that you are closer to one side or the other of your little shopping bag, depending on if you're working left or right handed. Now we're going to split up all the stitches in this row to make some handles. So right where you are, you're going to chain one and half double crochet into the same stitch that you slip stitched into. So right where you are, half double crochet, you're going to half double crochet into each of the next 11 stitches. You should have 12 stitches, 12 half double crochet in total, so the one that we worked in the stitch that we'd slip stitched into, plus the next 11. Now we're going to create a handle. We're going to chain 11, So 11 chains, we're going to skip 11 stitches, so there's the 11th stitch, into the very next stitch you are going to half double crochet. So skip chain 11, skip 11, and half double crochet into the very next stitch. So now you should have something that looks like this. You're going to half double crochet into each of the next 11 stitches. You should have an additional 12 half double crochet now along the other side of your bag. So the half double crochet that we worked at the end of our chain 11 plus the next 11 half double crochet, so that's 12. We're going to chain 11 for the second handle. We're going to skip the remaining chains or the remaining stitches that are left, which would be 11 plus the false stitch, and we're going to join with a slip stitch to the top of the first half double crochet we made in this row. You should still have 46 stitches all the way around, and if you lay your bag down flat, you should see that it is wide, sort of small at the bottom, it widens out because of the mesh, and now you've got two little handles up top. We're going to work a couple rows now of just half double crochet all the way around so that we can make the top of our handles a little stronger. Each row will still have 46 stitches in it. We're going to begin with a chain one and a half double crochet in the same stitch that we joined in. You're going to half double crochet into each of the next 11 stitches and then half double crochet into each of those 11 chains, the next 12 half double crochets and the next 11 chains. So when you get to the end of this row, and you're going to work into the chains as opposed to into the space because that is going to make your stitches a little bit stronger. It'll make your handles look a little neater across the bottom. So when you get to your chained handles, 
half double crochet into each chain as opposed to the space. And I'll catch up with you at the end of the row. Your 46th stitch will be put into the last chain. There's that little chain one that began the row, so don't confuse it with an actual stitch. If you look really closely and you pinch your, your last stitch together, you'll see that little false stitch there. It's very small. We're going to skip that, the chain one, and we're going to slip stitch into the top of the first real half double crochet that began the row. So you should still have 46 stitches all the way around. And now our handles look a little firmer. We want to work one more row of half double crochet all the way around just to make sure that those firm handles are not going to stretch out too much and it gives you something decent to grip. So we're going to chain one to begin the row, half double crochet into the same stitch as joining. You're going to half double crochet in each stitch around. Your last stitch, number 46, will be worked here. That's the false stitch. We're going to skip it and we're going to join with a slip stitch to the top of the first real half double crochet in the row and we'll be all done. At the end of row 28, your 46th stitch will be right here. We're going to skip over top of the false stitch, the chain one, and join with a slip stitch to the top of the first half double crochet. That is it! You can grab your scissors, snip your yarn, fasten off, and now you can grab your yarn needle, flip your sack so that you're looking at the inside of the handle and you can just weave your tail in back and forth across some of the stitches in that last row. Remember to weave it first one way, jump over top of the last little loop and then back through the same stitches. Do it two or three times until either all of your yarn is woven in or you feel like it's in there nice and securely and it's not going to come undone. Make sure you don't pull too tightly because you don't want to pull your stitches out of alignment or make one side of your bag look tighter than the other. And if you do have any leftover yarn, you can just trim up, trim it up <laughs> with your scissors. And there you go, a fruit and vegetable mesh shopping bag. You can give it a little stretch stretch it out either way, either direction, and of course because it's made out of cotton you can toss them in the washing machine and wash them over and over and over again and they will hold up to quite a bit of use. So we hope you enjoyed making these reusable fruit and vegetable mesh shopping bags together with us this week and we will see you soon here on the Jaden Stitches Show. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty, and have a wonderful week. Bye everybody! <laughs>